This is Chemical Processes for Micro and Nanofabrication. I'm Chris Mack, and this is part two of what looks to be a three-part series on line edge roughness. We're at lecture 66. Last time we talked about uh, two sources of randomness that occur when we expose photoresist. One source was the photons themselves. We shine fo light onto a resist, but the light's made up of photons and photons uh, are a statistical quantity. We cannot guarantee an exact number of photons um, when we expose by a certain dose. Instead, uh, photons are counted with a Poisson distribution. You try to give it a certain number of photons, but there's a certain uh, uncertainty in the number of photons you give. Those photons will follow a Poisson distribution, and we say that there's photon shot noise. Then the chemistry um, will have its own uncertainty, beginning with the concentration itself. So we mix up a photoresist, and we mix it up with an average number of photoacid generators in, in uh, a certain volume. But <coughs> given any small volume, there's going to be a random number of photoacid generators in that volume. So we have a random number of photoacid generators, and then we supply a random number of photons. Um, with certain averages, but certain uncertainties associated with them as well. Then uh, there's a, a certain number of those photons that get absorbed. It's also a random event, absorption. Um, once a, a photoacid generator has absorbed a photon, there's a certain probability, given by the quantum efficiency uh, of the chemical reaction, certain probability that an acid will be generated. So all of these events are stochastic events. They're random events. They sometimes happen and they sometimes don't. And on average, we know how to describe them. We describe them with a dose, we describe them with a concentration, and with a uh, kinetic reaction rate. But when we look at things probabilistically, all of those uh, quantities simply provide a mean value for the amount of acid that we'll get at the end. There's also a probability distribution for that acid. And that probability distribution provides an uncertainty in the amount of acid that's generated. So for some given volume V, we work through all the math, and we're not going to do any of the math um, other than the Poisson distribution we did before. We're just going to show you the result. Here is the uncertainty in the acid concentration. Now, notice that I I give the uncertainty relative to the mean. Remember these uh, brackets around a concentration. Um, it tells us the mean. So this uh, bracketed around the H is the mean relative acid concentration. And so this is the uh, standard deviation of the acid relative to the mean. And then I take the whole quantity and square it. So it's it's the relative variance. Um, so what is that a function of? Well, it's a function of the mean relative acid concentration, um, but we also have the mean initial number of PAGs that are in that volume. So this is, you know, when we mix up the photoresist, it has a certain concentration. So for a certain volume, there's a certain mean number of PAGs. Then we also have the mean number of incident photons, and it's incident on some area A, uh, and it comes from a mean exposure dose. Um, multiplied by lambda over hc, where hc over lambda is the energy associated with one photon. That's Planck's constant h times the speed of light c divided by the wavelength lambda. That is simply the energy of one photon. And at 193 nanometer light, the energy of, of one photon is given here. Uh, that works out, by the way, to about 5 eV, 5 electron volts uh, per photon. Uh, another unit of measure of the energy. So we have a certain energy of a photon. We give it a certain dose that, that gives us a certain number of photons. But we also have our kinetic equation. Remember, uh, the first order kinetics of exposure says the number of acids, relative number of acids, goes as 1 minus e to the minus c times e. So this gives us the stochastic uncertainty in the number of acids generated upon exposure. 
You can see there's a lot of pieces to it, but it has the basic components um, of photon shot noise, uh, chemical shot, so the photon shot noise over here, chemical shot noise over here, and then the exposure reaction itself provides this term. So all of the uncertainty terms combine together to produce a certain uncertainty in the amount of acid. Well, that's 193 exposure. Let me mention briefly uh, the difference between a 193 resist and an EUV resist. Remember EUV we exposed with a wavelength of 13.5 nanometers. Well, at that wavelength, the photons have much higher energy. They're about 92 EV or more energy than a 193 nanometer photon. That higher energy means we get a different kind of chemical reaction when we expose to EUV light. When that EUV photon is absorbed, it's absorbed by the polymer, not by the PAG. And when it's absorbed, the energy is much higher than the ionization potential for uh, a, a piece of the polymer. So what happens the ionization potential is usually on the order of about 10 eV. Uh, so a 193 nanometer photon can't ionize the polymer, doesn't have enough energy, but an eV photon can. So we, we have a certain ionization, that uh, potential, and will kick off an electron. That electron uh, will have an energy that's something like 92 minus about 10 eV, so uh, maybe 82 electron volts remaining. Still a fairly high energy electron. So what's it going to do? It's going to bounce around inside the photoresist just like we saw when we looked at E-beam lithography. This, uh, this um, photoelectron it's called will then randomly bounce around scattering, losing energy, maybe producing secondary electrons as well. In fact we can get a cascade of secondary electrons. Typically three or four secondary electrons are generated per uh, uh, photon. These electrons then can interact with a PAG in some way, transferring energy to the photoacid generator, which then generates an acid. Every one of these events is a stochastic event. There's a certain probability of getting a certain number of photons, there's a probability of absorption, ionization, uh, scattering events, all random events and the resulting acid will have an uncertainty. We won't get an exact number of acids for an exact amount of dose. So we work through all the statistics of those interactions and we find an equation that looks a lot like uh, we saw before. But now instead of the number of photons uh, in, in this term we have the number of photoelectrons generated. The number of photoelectrons is determined by the number of photons times the, uh, the number of those photons that are absorbed, which is 1 minus e to the minus alpha d, multiplied by uh, this uh, photoelectron generation efficiency, which is probably pretty close to 1. Almost every photon generates a photoelectron. So in many ways, this is a very, very similar to what we saw for 193 resist, but a little bit different because we add this uh, photoelectron uh, generation mechanism. And uh, we also don't have to have the photon interact with a PAG. It interacts with any place in the photoresist and will generate a photoelectron. So we decouple uh, the absorption event from uh, the reaction event. Well, let's look at these um, terms. And in fact, we, we can break this up into two basic terms. We have a term that has to do with the photoelectrons and a term that has to do with the with the PAG uncertainty. So this is a, the photon shot noise piece and this is the uh, PAG concentration shot noise piece. And if we plotted them to, the two up individually, we see an interesting behavior. Uh, so here in the black line I have the equation that I just showed on the previous slide. Uh, in these uh, red squares I actually have a Monte Carlo simulation going on. Uh, and they match perfectly. So Monte Carlo simulation of the results to give a certain uncertainty in the acid gives the exact same result as this uh, equation that I showed. But if I break the equation up into two pieces, I have in the purple line here the photoelectron shot noise piece, 
which is the second half of that equation. And then I have uh, just the shot noise that came from uh, the PAG uncertainty in the dashed line. I add these two together, I get the, the um, black line uncertainty uh, that we had before. I add them in quadrature. But we see that for low exposure doses, so this is the acid concentration is low, so I have a low amount of dose, I'm dominated by the, uh, the photon shot noise, the photoelectron shot noise. And then for high concentrations, I become high exposure doses rather, I become dominated by uh, the, the PAG shot noise. Well, in general, I think uh, uh, we'll mostly be in a regime maybe where 50% uh, of the PAG gets converted to acid. So in this regime, I'm pretty much uh, dependent on both terms, not one or the other. Uh, you see at this crossover point, each term is contributing equally to an uncertainty, and in this, uh, this regime of 0 0.4 to 0 0.6, 40%, 60% of the acid is generated, is probably the normal lithographic regime, and both of these terms contribute. Uh, how can we reduce the uncertainty in the amount of acid that's generated upon exposure? Well, the same ideas apply to both 193 and UV resists, but let's look at the UV case uh, as our example. What can we do? Well, if I assume that I hold the dose, exposure dose constant, then first thing I can do is try to have a resist with a high value of the exposure rate constant C. That essentially means uh, a high quantum efficiency. So every time a PAG sees one of these electrons, it actually uh, converts to an acid. I could also have high absorption. If I increase the value of alpha, or alpha times D, I get higher amount of absorption, and that's good. We don't want any wasted photons. Photons that are not absorbed are photons that are not wasted. I can increase the PAG loading, that is the concentration of the photoacid generator, and I can increase the photoelectron generation efficiency, although it's probably pretty close to one anyway, so I'm not sure there's much room there. And that's it. That's the only thing you can do to improve uh, the uncertainty in the amount of acid, assuming you hold the dose constant. Of course, the other thing you can do is increase the exposure dose. And we see that very clearly with EUV resists. If we use a higher amount of exposure dose, we get less line edge roughness. If we use a, a lower exposure dose, which we want to do in order to have uh, better throughput for, for our EUV tools, then we see greater amounts of line edge roughness. And this is the ugly trade-off that we have in front of us. I want low dose to get high throughput, but if I might keep my dose too low, I get higher uncertainty and then higher uh, um, levels of line edge roughness. Well, that's the exposure reaction. Well, now we have a, a post-exposure bake, which causes uh, reaction diffusion, chemical amplification. We have developed all of these things lead to uh, uncertainty as well. Reaction is a catalyzed uh, uh, acid. Acid acts as a catalyst and the acid diffuses around and, and causes deblocking. So we can model this with what's called a von Smolsky trap. The acid moves around and when it reaches uh, a deblocking site and approaches within some capture radius A, some little spherical volume, once it goes inside the sphere, we say that the acid's trapped and a reaction can occur. Well, then the acid's regenerated and it can diffuse around some more. Turns out that statistically it's this uh, capture radius A that is significant. We go through all the math, and it's ugly math, but we go through all the math to figure out the uncertainty, and we get this big old long equation. Now we let M be the concentration of the blocked sites on the polymer, just like we saw before. So this is the relative uncertainty in the number of, of blocked sites on the polymer. And we see a number of pieces to this equation. First we have the photon shot noise. We saw this piece earlier. We've got the PAG concentration shot noise. We have the exposure piece. So all of this is the uncertainty in the acid that got generated by exposure. But then the reaction diffusion piece adds this term, and the key here is I have the diameter 
of the von Smolsky trap divided by the diffusion length of the acid. That's what sigma sub d is, the diffusion length of the acid. And the ratio of, of the diameter of the trap to the diffusion length results in smoothing. You see, if, if the diffusion length is bigger than the trap diameter, I end up reducing this quantity, the acid uncertainty. So the effect of reaction diffusion, the effect of having an acid that moves around the resist, causing multiple deblocking events, is a smoothing effect. It, it tends to reduce the uncertainty uh, as long as the diffusion length is bigger than the acid trap diameter. Then we have the deblocking itself and the uncertainty associated with the random distribution of blocking groups, and the result is a, is a combined uncertainty in the amount of blocked and deblocked groups remaining at the end of post-exposure bank. Now, one more thing I'd like to bring up. Diffusion has two impacts. As we just saw, Diffusion reduces the uncertainty in the amount of blocking group because it smooths out the acid uncertainty. So I look at the impact on, on sigma m, the, the uncertainty in the amount of blocking groups, and I find that if I increase the diffusion length, this uncertainty goes down. So here I have acid diffusion length increasing, and here I have the uncertainty in the number of blocked groups. And when I increase the diffusion length, this, this uncertainty goes down. But diffusion causes something else to happen. It smears out my image. If my acid diffuses too far, all of my features get smeared out. If the acid goes all the way from the middle of the space to the middle of the line, I will completely smooth out all of my features. That's no good. And in fact, the amount of line edge roughness the standard deviation of the feature edge will be proportional to the uncertainty in the amount of blocked group divided by the gradient of the amount of blocked uh, species in the polymer. So as I increase the diffusion, the gradient gets worse. And so the one over the gradient goes up as my uh, diffusion length goes up. Because of that, one goes down and the other goes up, this ratio ends up having an optimum. The optimum occurs when I balance off the beneficial effect of smoothing from acid diffusion against the detrimental effect of smearing out my image because of diffusion. The result is there is an optimum diffusion length. And uh, when we reach that optimum diffusion length, then uh, that's the best we can do in terms of improving the LER. That optimum diffusion length is relatively small, I think, and as a result, we would benefit from having less diffusion than we actually do today uh, in terms of uh, getting the, the lowest amount of LER. Well, we haven't quite finished everything uh, to give a complete picture of what LER is like, but we've gone further. We now understand uncertainties in terms of reaction diffusion uh, as well as exposure. Let's look at what we've learned so far. What are three stochastic components that contribute to acid uncertainty after exposure? You should be able to use the 193 nanometer and EUV resist stochastic equations to work problems to, uh, in terms of the uncertainty of the acid at the end of exposure. How can acid uncertainty in an EUV resist be reduced? In fact, we described four ways uh, in which we can reduce the uncertainty for an EUV resist, and that's it. That's all you can do. And finally, explain why there's an optimum acid diffusion length that minimizes uh, the LER. Well, next time, I think we'll finish up our discussion of, of LER and, and try to understand the big picture of roughness and stochastic lithography. Till then.